This is a teaching program for the culture of safety in cholecystectomy, including the critical view of safety and other aspects of safety in laparoscopic cholecystectomy. It comes from the section of hepatobiliary pancreatic surgery at Washington University in St. Louis. This program is about safety in cholecystectomy. It teaches about error traps and the critical view of safety in section one. In section two, it demonstrates dissection techniques needed to achieve the critical view of safety. It then teaches about a culture of safety in cholecystectomy and what to do if the critical view of safety cannot be achieved. Finally, there's a short section about interpretation of intraoperative cholangiograms. It teaches about a way of thinking regarding safety in cholecystectomy, and it uses personification of key concepts. So let's first meet the cast of characters who personify the issues in biliary injury. These include Orville Kerville, an ordinary, well-trained surgeon. Cossack, a knight who is the surgeon's friend. Biff, an inflammatory scorpion who sometimes resides in the right upper quadrant. And Abe Arendt, a mischievous fellow who misplaces things, thus increasing the difficulty of surgery. Let's first meet the good guys. Orville Careful. Orville is one of us. He could be you or me. He's well trained. He loves caring for patients and being a surgeon, but he's not perfect. Collectively, the Orvilles of the world are doing an operation, laparoscopic cholecystectomy, which is still associated with a still too common serious complication bile duct injury. Orville has powerful opponents in the right upper quadrant and he needs a friend. This is Cossack. His name stands for culture of safety in cholecystectomy. Cossack is the friend and protector of patients and surgeons like Orville and us. When you see Cossack, that means that an action associated with increased safety in cholecystectomy is being recommended. Danger zones. When an area associated with danger is being discussed, you will see this symbol. Now let's meet the two villains who between them are responsible for most biliary injuries. First, let's meet Biff. That stands for biliary inflammatory fusion. He's the evil scorpion of the biliary tract. And he says, grr, I hate surgeons. What about Biff and gallbladder surgery? The gallbladder is a rather small, innocuous organ attached to the liver and connected to the rest of the body by a small artery and a small duct. As anyone who has performed a cholecystectomy on a normal gallbladder knows, the artery and duct are found within easily dissected areolar tissue and the gallbladder is readily separated from the liver. But the gallbladder and its duct and artery lie close to the vessels and ducts of the liver, an organ essential to life. That's where Biff comes in. Biff sticks things together. He makes two things look like one. That makes it difficult to tell where one structure begins and the adjacent one ends. Specifically, this results in the common bile duct looking just like the cystic duct. Biff can change cholecystectomy from one of the most straightforward abdominal operations to one of the most difficult. That's because Biff can turn a simple gallbladder operation into a difficult liver operation. Let's see an example of what Biff can do. This is a diagrammatic example of Biff. You will be seeing this figure a lot. Biff has fused the common hepatic duct to the lower end of the gallbladder. He fuses to confuse. The orange arrows in the figure on the left 
point to the common bile duct and the common hepatic duct. The red arrow points to the area of fusion between the common hepatic duct and the gallbladder. On the right in the cartoon, it can be seen how this fusion gives the appearance that the common duct is coming right out of the gallbladder. The cystic duct becomes hidden, and as we will see, this is why surgeons may mistake the common bile duct to be the cystic duct. Now, let's see a real example of Biff at work. Now we are in a danger zone. Here is a bile duct injury caused by Biff. The referring surgeon left the gallbladder in, and this is what was seen when the abdomen was opened some hours after the injury. What do we see? The cut end of the common hepatic duct and the clipped end of the common bile duct. There is a piece of duct missing. The gap between the top of the common bile duct and the bottom of the common hepatic duct is indicated by the green bracket. But where is the missing piece of duct? There it is. It's so fused to the gallbladder that it appears to be part of it. Even in this higher power close-up picture, the duct and the gallbladder are so fused that it's difficult to distinguish them. Biff has struck again. Biff is a very important cause of biliary injury, but not the only cause. Aberrant anatomy is also an important element. That's where the second villain comes in. Now meet Abe Arendt, also known as Aberrant Abe. He loves to put things in the wrong place. He says, ha ha, I love to trick surgeons. By far, the most common trick that Abe plays is to place a right hepatic duct out of position so that it unites with the cystic duct. This makes the aberrant duct look like the cystic duct. He loves to trick Orville in this way. Aberrant anatomy. Every surgeon knows that aberrant anatomy is common in the porta hepatis. The aberrant right hepatic duct is the most important anomaly in cholecystectomy. In the picture on the left, we can trace the usual or normal formation of the right ductal system. Four segmental ducts from segments 5 to 8 and labeled B5 to B8 join to form two sectional ducts, the right anterior sectional duct and the right posterior sectional ducts indicated by the green arrows. The sectional ducts then join to form the right hepatic duct indicated again by a green arrow. One common type of aberrancy in which the union of a right hepatic duct with the rest of the biliary tree is shifted inferiorly is demonstrated on the right. Two sectional ducts are formed from four segmental ducts as usual, but these sectional ducts join the biliary tree independently without ever forming a right hepatic duct. This diagram is demonstrating that the right posterior sectional duct may unite with a common hepatic duct at different levels, as shown in the red circle. The right anterior sectional ducts any of the segmental ducts or even the right hepatic duct may unite in this way. The most dangerous aberrancy is indicated by the red arrow. It is when a right duct unites with a cystic duct. Then the aberrant duct may appear to be the cystic duct to the operating surgeon. It is therefore prone to injury during cholecystectomy. However, Low aberrant right ducts do not have to unite with, with the cystic duct to be injured. They may cross the hepatocystic triangle and can be injured during dissection. Here is an example of this dangerous anomaly 
in which the aberrant right posterior sectional duct joins with the cystic duct. This type of union results in a situation in which the surgeon sees what he believes is a cystic duct, but in fact is the joined aberrant duct with the cystic duct. Note again that once the two ducts unite, the duct so formed by their union looks just like a cystic duct. This anomaly can really fool surgeons into thinking the combined duct is really the cystic duct. And when the combined duct is clipped and cut, bile flow from the part of the liver served by the aberrant duct is obstructed. Or, if the aberrant duct is just cut and left open, a postoperative biloma will form and the duct will require repair in most cases. The aberrant right hepatic duct is by far the most common cause of biliary injury associated with aberrant anatomy. There are also many other biliary anomalies. Anomalies may also affect the hepatic arteries and even the portal veins. A complete description of anomalies is beyond our purpose, but in terms of safety to avoid injury due to aberrant anatomy, one should adopt a technique of dissection that accounts for the possibility of anomalies in the field. More about that soon. It should now be apparent that Biff and Abe share a common characteristic. They make the cystic duct look like another duct, and this can fool Orville, our surgeon. Biff likes to make the common duct look like the cystic duct, while Abe likes to make an aberrant duct look like the cystic duct. Now let's learn how to defeat Biff and Abe, or at least avoid Biff's stinger. Let's avoid this. Now on to section one. Safety first. The safe way is always the best way. 